Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble the Husqvarna 235 and 240 series of chainsaws. I'll show you how to get the, the access you need, the room you need to be able to replace the carburetor. I'll explain how the fuel line routing works. I know that the machines that have the purge bubble separated from the carb tend to throw people through a loop because there's three fuel lines instead of just two. And a lot of times the ethanol and the fuel will eat the old lines and so when you're taking everything apart they just crumble into pixie dust and you have no idea or any point of reference how they went together in the first place. So I'll go ahead and explain that. Um, these chainsaws they replace for about 150, 200 bucks. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about paying a shop to do this, a lot of times it depends on the labor rates in your area, but it will almost cost you the same price of a new saw. So it, it doesn't really make sense to pay them to do it. And at that point, you're either going to be buying a new saw or you're thinking about doing it yourself. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about doing it yourself. So hopefully this will make things a little bit easier for you. And let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and removed the, the bar and chain. You don't have to do that. I just feel that it makes it easier moving the thing around and flipping around. You don't have to worry about cutting your hands on the chain. And I'll go ahead and, and dump the fuel out. And mostly just so I don't spill fuel all over the table. And then the other reason is a lot of times the reason why you're having to do this is because you left fuel in it and it went old and bad. And there's no point in going through all the time of putting a new carb on there and then running old stinky fuel through it. So go ahead and dump the fuel out of there. Pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go ahead and start by removing the top cover. There's three screws that hold it on. All right, so we got those out of the way. Go ahead and remove your top cover. Now the next part is you're actually going to remove the whole handle assembly from the, the motor housing. There's three screws that hold it on. There's one here on the side and two underneath. So we'll go ahead and do that. With all those out of the way, uh, the only thing that's preventing this housing from sliding out is there's a small throttle linkage right here between the handle and the carb. Uh, some people what they'll actually do is they'll squeeze the trigger and they'll take a pair of pliers or something from uh, up top here and wiggle it loose. Um, what I'm actually going to do is remove the handle and get it out of there and I'll show you why. It makes it easier to reassemble. So, that so we got all these loosened. Go ahead and carefully Take your handle apart and get that out of the way. And this is why I prefer to do this way. It makes it easier for reassembly so you can just gently take your trigger off, swing it off that linkage. Make sure you don't lose that little spring right there. It's pretty important you're going to need it later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the trigger back on with the linkage removed and then just kind of lightly tighten my handle back together just so I don't lose anything in here. These are lightly tightened enough just so I won't lose the trigger or the spring. Make sure your throttle linkage doesn't get pitched back in there. So now you can slide the whole motor assembly away from the handle. So you gotta slide it out and then the whole motor takes off. And you can just take this and put it to the side. So now when you're looking at your power head, you're almost there. The only thing that's getting in your way now is this one screw here on the side that holds this plate. With that loose, you should be able to gently take this plate off and just fish it around your throttle linkage. And there you go. Now all you're looking at is what you're used to. This part should be pretty straightforward. So we'll go ahead and remove that, get the air filter off, and then take the, the mounting screws for the air box. One torque screw, do not go. So this might be wedged on here. You might need to take a flathead screwdriver or something back here and, and gently pry it off. There'll be a bunch of sawdust and stuff holding it on, but you can just kind of wiggle it off those mounting bolts. And you can gently swing it out of your way. You don't need to remove the, the kill switch or any of the wires. You can just gently swing it off out of your way. And now you're looking right at the carb. So same thing, you might have to jiggle it, wiggle it, pry it loose, but it should just slide right off. And you'll have to disconnect your fuel lines um, once you get enough room in there. So this is what the carburetor removed. This is the, the old carb. 
Um, I'm actually not replacing this one. This one's fine. I just made this for the video. But uh, when you're putting on your new carbs, there's a couple pieces you're going to need. One is this throttle linkage right here. Just go ahead and take that out of the way. And then the choke lever. So just go ahead and pull it forward and swing it out of the way. And we'll toss that to the side. So yours may not look like this, it may not be as clean, but it's not a bad idea to stuff a rag inside there, so that way you're not uh, blowing any dirt or anything inside the, the engine. And go ahead and, and take a toothbrush or compressed air, whatever you got, and might as well clean it up back here. A couple things you want to keep in mind is if you have an old piece of fuel line, take it with you when you go to buy a new one or compare it to the new one. You want to make sure it's the right size. The only thing that seals that fuel line from the tank is the fuel line itself. So if it's too small, fuel is going to leak out of that hole. And if it's too big, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to fish it in. I've seen a lot of guys, they'll tie fishing string and, and pull it through that hole. And there's, there's a lot of different ways I've seen it done. The way that I like to do it, like I said, I'm not actually doing it, but I'll, I'll show you the tip is this is just a small piece of scrap fuel line I had laying around cut it into a small needle point now that's really crude but hopefully you'll get the idea and for the rest of the fuel line you take a little bit of two-stroke oil or whatever you got lying around and rub it on the outside so that way it'll go through you feed your needle point in through the tank go in through the the gas tank cap here take a pair of pliers grab onto it pull it through and then you cut it flash and put your fuel filter on and then the fuel lines all broke apart you're probably not it's probably not going to look like this and you're not going to have any idea how anything went together so i'll explain that a little bit so this is the carburetor as it sits on the machine and it's every machine that has a setup is going to be like this so this line is the end of the it goes inside the tank with the little fuel filter and so you have two barbs on your carb. You have one on your right and one on your left. And this is how it actually sits on the machine. So coming out of the fuel tank with the fuel filter, it's going to go right here. And then there's going to be a small piece of fuel line that comes from out of the carb into the lower end or the smaller inlet of the bubble. And then it's going to go out of the bubble back into the tank and maybe I'll make a pretty little picture or something just for fun to kind of illustrate that point but really really straightforward guys out of the tank into the carb out of the carb into the bubble out of the bubble back into the tank all right so this is kind of a, a crude diagram now one of the weird things that kind of made me understand this I always knew that these bubbles were one-way valves and if you ever want to know the the inlet uh, most of the time it's the shorter one or a lot of the times and I don't think the camera's going to pick this up but they'll actually write in text which one is which but this is what made me understand this a lot better if you plug your finger on the one that we know is the inlet and you push the bubble it will allow the, allow the air to go back out but the air can't come back in the bubble can't expand until I let go and then likewise, if I put my finger on the outlet and plug it and I try and push the bubble, it won't let the air out, so I can't push it out. And that's what made this easier to understand is that you're not pushing the fuel into the carb. You're actually creating a vacuum when the bubble goes back out and it's pulling the fuel through the system, not pushing it. All right, so for you're installing a new carb, we go ahead and put our throttle linkage back on. Go ahead and put your choke lever back on. Uh, when you're putting your car back on, make sure none of your fuel lines are, are getting pinched. They're not getting squeezed in between the air box. You're going to go ahead and swing this back over. Now there's a little notch right on here. You want to make sure that the choke knob rides on top, not on the bottom. Otherwise it won't work correctly and there's a little rubber grommet right here let me see if I can get a good view of that there's a little rubber grommet right there once you get everything back together you want to make sure that the wires are inside there that's what prevents them burning on there alright so now you got your air box slid back on there make sure you didn't accidentally disconnect your your kill switch I'm gonna test the choke for function so when you pull the choke lever out and you push back in on the throttle linkage should click back in on its own make sure the wires are back in their little home so that way you're not burning rubber later on 
and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this all back up and put the air filter back on. Now we can, with all these tight, and go ahead and reinstall our air filter. Hopefully you're using a new air filter. This one's not that bad, so I'm not. Go ahead and slide that in there. Put your plate and the screw that holds it back on. Reinstall this plate. You just want to gently fish the linkage through the hole and then tighten it back on with the screw on the side. One thing I should mention is to get this plate back on, it makes it a little bit easier if you pull that choke uh, lever up and out of your way. Okay, so before I attach the three screws holding the handle on, I'm going to put my linkage back on and maybe you'll see why I like to do it, take the handle apart rather than fishing from the top. So I'll show you why I think that's the easier way. But you can do it either way. You can fish it, you can squeeze the trigger and, and fish it into the hole or you can take it apart again. But these are just loosely tightened in just to make sure I don't lose anything. So go ahead and take your trigger off. Make sure you don't lose that spring. Up here in the hole is where the throttle linkage goes and you can just swing it right in and then you may have to move the whole handle assembly you get it back on there and you want to make sure that that spring is on the outside that's what helps pull it back so go ahead and put the outside of the string and then we're gonna put this back on and check to make sure it functions to check for function so once again pull your choke knob out and when you hit the throttle it should click back it's on its own so the only thing left to do is put the the three screws that hold the handle on. The only thing that's holding this on at the moment is that little throttle linkage. So, so there's one thing I should mention when you're putting the handle back on. There's, there's there's three screws. Two of them are the same length. One's shorter. The shorter one is going to go under here. So there's that little hole in the spring. That's where the shorter screw goes, just in case you forgot. So I got the handle cinched on back tight. Uh, the only thing left at this point would be to put your top cover back on. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, hopefully you got the, the room you needed to be able to put the new carb on. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how machines where the purge bubble is isolated from the carb, how the, the routing works, and, and not just on this machine, but on all of them. And hopefully, uh, hopefully this will keep you from having to buy a new saw or pay somebody to fix your old one. Uh, that's all I got.